Okay, next section is small, only about, I guess, five, five books on philosophy and education. So first one I'm going to do is this one, which just says that on the cover, but if you look on the side, it says The Soft Revolution. This is by Neil Postman and uh, Weingartner. I don't know Weingartner, but I do know Neil Postman. You probably do too if you've seen some more of my videos. Using Ourselves to Death, I recommend. Uh, he's also got, he's certainly a writer on the technology, influences on culture, education. He's got a book on the end of education and some other stuff. But this particular book is on, um, he, it's, it's kind of like a student rebellion book. He's a critic of the education system and kind of like uh, um, Gatto, what's his name, John Taylor Gatto. And this particular book has a lot of random, like, uh, like uh, writings and pamphlets and stuff. And he's also speaking to teachers and trying to get them to realize what's going on in the system. And he's got all kinds of strange pictures in here. I'm going to show you a couple of them. Like here's a picture of a guillotine. And uh, here's a strange one. How about you tell me what this means? Tell me what, the, what you think this picture is. You see like a, a baby, although it's got wings, so maybe it's like a cupid or something, and, it, and it's got like a press, some books around it, some bottles. What the heck is that supposed to be? So anyways, and maybe I'll show you this too, this might be of significance. Interesting. The fist, right? The, almost like the communist fist, right? But what's it holding? It's holding a pen and a peace sign there. Interesting. So that's one of the early, I think it was an early Neil Postman book on education. All right, let's stick with education. This is like halfway between education and uh, philosophy. The philosophy, philosophy of education, essays, and uh, commentaries. Uh, this particular book I wanted because I had it in the, from the library, and it had some really nice stuff in it, so I wanted a copy, so I looked online, and there was a cheap copy online. It's actually a used library book from Kent State University, Kent, Ohio. And it says it's withdrawn from the university, so if Kent University wants to know whatever happened to it, well, I have it. It's in my possession. Um, and it's got some great stuff in here by Dewey. I know that was one of them that was in here that I wanted it for. It's got, it's got a whole bunch of people in here. Dewey, there's Cunningham. Oh, I guess most of the people won't be, won't be uh, at all known to the people listening to it right now. So A.J. Ayer, I'm, some people probably know about him. That's probably it. Pope Pius XI is in here, strangely. Um, you may know Scheffler, if you're in education. Uh, you probably won't know the rest, though. But there's some good stuff in here. There's, um, I'll just read the titles of the chapters, or the parts, I guess. Introduction, Man, Maps, and Philosophy. Introduction, Charts, Categories, and Philosophy, uh, Levels of Educational Theory, The Problem of Relating Theory to Practice. That's been a whipped horse, uh, question of theory and practice, bridging the gap, and that's been talked about for a long time. So anyways, uh, the most interesting parts of this book for me are what is philosophy of education, what it can do for teachers' education, things like that. Okay, now into more philosophy. Um, here is, this is a random find, The Book of Five Rings by um, Musashi. There it is. Masashi. This is supposed to be a book similar to um, Sun Tzu's Art of War, only this is uh, Japan, and it's about ninjas and samurais, but also just about the um, the five rings, which are the ground, the different books. The ground book, the water book, the fire book, the wind book, the book of the void. And I'll show you a couple pictures here of, uh, there was one here, yeah. Here's one. Ooh. Samurai book. So anyways, it's supposed to be about, um, it's actually, it's on the front here, it says, uh, well, the subtitle is A Classic Guide to Strategy, 
but it also says here it's a national bestseller, and it's Japan's answer to the Harvard MBA. So it's um, it's on the back here. It talks about it's like a book for business people to strategize. The, Anyways, it, I, it's apparently just kind of like a Sun Tzu book, like gives you little pieces to think about. And um, War strategy is a way of, of interacting with people. But Sun Tzu, if you haven't read Sun Tzu's Out of War, you need to read that one. That's a must. Here's just a second copy of, of Ayn Rand's The Virtue of Selfishness. Um, I thought it looked kind of neat, so I thought I'd pick it up. I do have the other, uh, I do have like the signet, green one, but I thought it'd be neat to pick up this old one that had a different cover, and just to have another copy of it so I can, if people want to read it and lend it out. Um, she just speaks about, a, it's the subtitle is a, a new concept of egoism. She, is, she defines selfishness differently than most people. Usually people think selfishness just means that you run around and screw anybody you can and just do everything just for you, but that's not what she means by selfishness. And she uh, belabors the point that altruism is destructive. So if you're interested in that, if that's like if that piques your interest and you're like, what, how can someone say that? So, uh, altruism is wonderful and you should give to charity and if you don't give to charity, you're a bad person and all that kind of stuff, then why don't you check out her work and, and uh, maybe it'll change your mind. Okay, last one. Uh, quotations, this isn't really philosophy, but I didn't know where else to put it. Quotations from Chairman Mao Tsung. This is supposed to be what the Chinese call, I'll show you here, the Little Red Book. So China, if you're a Chinaman, <laughs> they call them, I don't know if Chinaman's even a word people use. Apparently, um, these are passed out, kind of like the U.S. Constitution, little U.S. Constitution people put in their pocket. Apparently, you can get a little red book, and it's Mao's uh, quotations from Chairman Mao, and that's kind of like the, the, the Chinese communist philosophy. So I thought, well, hey, I'll, I'll have that, and I'll see what Mao has to say. I'll, I'll hear about his let a thousand flowers bloom and all that kind of stuff. It says in here, socialism and communism is, is a part. Um, it says here, People's War, the People's Army, uh, Political Work, Serving the People, and a bunch of different stuff, Youth and Women, Culture and Arts, Study, Criticism and Self-Criticism. You know what, maybe I'll find you, an, I'll find you a quote. I'll, look, I'll take a couple minutes here and look through it, and I'll find you a quote that I thought was kind of interesting or whatever. <laughs> okay. All right, I got some uh what should I say? They're hilarious at the same time they are um haunting, um ominous, I don't know. So <laughs> there was a there's a a small part about education of the troops that I read cuz I thought maybe there'd be an educational thing there, but I would really nothing that significant there. Um but then I went to Serving the People, and there's some, you know, it's funny that the last book I did was was Ayn Rand's Selfishness book, because you're going to see a uh, butting of heads in a minute here. Uh, so the first one, it's actually, what this book is, is it's quotes of Chairman Mao from other books that he wrote, as well as government policy books and stuff like that. Uh, so it's a, this book is a collection of his quotes from other books that he's written. I thought it was like a, a one, a Chairman Mao like wrote it all into one little book that Chinese carry around, but I, I maybe not. So it says here um, that we should never divorce ourselves from the masses uh, to proceed in all cases from the interests of the people and not from one's self-interest or from the interests of a small group and to identify our responsibility to the people with our responsibility to the leading organs of the party, which is the Communist Party, of course. The organs of state must practice democratic centralism. And we must all learn the spirit of absolute selflessness, 
from him. With this spirit, everyone can be very useful to the people. A man's ability may be great or small, but if he has this spirit, he is already noble-minded and pure, a man of moral integrity and above vulgar interests, a man who is of value to the people. And there was one more. And the last one. All men must die, but death can vary in its significance. To die for the people is heavier than Mount Tai. And I took a quote out from the middle there. He just quoted some Chinese writer, but I didn't think it was worthwhile. He's just saying that um, to die for the people is greater than to die for something else. Um, but to work for the fascists and die for the exploiters and oppressors is lighter than a feather. So, anyways, I thought that is, well, I think you can derive the, your own conclusions from the kinds of system, the, the kind of system that that will create. Uh, putting one's aims as towards serving the state, because when he keeps saying the people, the people, and even in a Oh, even in Western countries, you hear the public interest, the public trust of the people. You hear that all the time, but really what that is, especially if one is supposed to serve the party or serve, uh, what was the other quote? Serving the party. I think it was, I guess it was just serving the party, serving the people. But the people are a mass group of people. But if they all are conforming to the party, then who speaks for the people and who rules the people well it's the party so it's just a, a it's just a great illusion it's a great power grab and these two are diametrically opposed they would have a battle if they could if they weren't just books certainly a battle of ideas okay next will be fiction